Hi, Jim Benson here from Modus Cooperandi and Personal Kanban. This is a quick interview with Deb McGee, who is the sales lead at the Lean Enterprise Institute. Deb has an extremely chaotic workload and she manages it quite gracefully. This is a video about how she does that. My name is Deb McGee. I work at Lean Enterprise Institute, hi. <laughs> uh, I'm the Learning Activities Manager, and what that means is I receive inquiries for support and collaboration from around the world. Uh, and I take, our, uh, I take our community through a series of steps to help connect them with coaches and content that will help them solve the problem that they're trying to solve. And so we have a uh, receiving routine, a screening routine, a triage that we go through, all in support of uh, uncovering the customer's objectives and uh, getting them connected with the support they want and need. I've been at LEI for three years. Uh, my background's in manufacturing. I spent the prior 13 years in a manufacturing company in Boston in a project management role. And uh, my personal lean journey is about I don't know, five to seven years old. So I'm still a, still a beginner, still learning, but I've had a lot of experience in those, uh, in those five to seven years with different kinds of projects. Awesome. So um, what has been the biggest challenge of, of getting your work done at, at LEI? Options. I think the, the number of options that are available to us uh, presents a challenge for me. Uh, so we work in an open office environment, uh, very well connected with one another and of work that everyone's doing. And so you have many, many different options of uh, projects and uh, you know, problems to contribute to studying and solving and working on. And so being able to stay focused on uh, the what's creating value for the customer um, mm -hmm. and what work will, what work you really need to get done as a, a need to do uh, before the want to do's and hope to do's. Uh, that presents a challenge for me. And in another way, uh, the way the options presents an obstacle for me is that we have a lot of content to choose from. Mm -hmm. And so when I listen to a customer and the problems that they're trying to solve, and I'd like to connect them with good content to help them, trying to narrow that down to the best available um, material that will help them learn. And then in another way, we have many different coaches that we work with. And so again, with the options of, you know, we could go to this whole spectrum of different coaches who all could supply some kind of help, but being able to really narrow down to the right, uh, the right content, the right type of intervention and the right person to help. So it's challenging. It, it, it sounds like more than a bit of work. <laughs> <laughs> So when we came in and did our, our first uh, workshop, uh, and uh, I know that, that changed uh, kind of how you related to your work, uh, can you kind of describe uh, how, you know, what resonated with you in, in, the, in what we did, and then how that, how that resonating, you know, carried forth into, your, into what you do every day? Yeah, and that was a wonderful workshop that came at just the right time. You know, it's funny how the right things come to you at the right times in life, and uh, so I, I actually needed some way of organizing all of the inputs that were coming at me, right, so that I could process more effectively. And at the same time, we were learning about Hoshin or doing Hoshin, and uh, I was helping out with a partner, and we were doing a plan for every part, or PFEP. Mm -hmm. And uh, the learning from personal Kanban, Hoshin, and PFEP all kind of mingled in the back of my head, and they mm -hmm. were really so complementary with one another. Uh, all boiled down to focusing on what you need to do uh, in the right size uh, and doing it to completion or being able to uh, take it as far as you can take it uh, before taking on the next thing. Um, and so in a, in a professional way, that was, that was very helpful with my work because the inquiries that I receive, right, those requests for support mm -hmm. and collaboration, they come from a lot of different uh, directions, right? There's about 11 different channels of ways customers can reach out to us. Um, and they come at an unpredictable rate. Uh, mm -hmm. And so in a day, I could get seven requests for inquiries. And so being able to uh, sort of develop a routine around receiving them and taking them in the right size as far as I can go, uh, it, was, it was just really helpful to organize that information and understand, this was one of the big learnings for me, uh, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but understand <laughs> uh, that the, the sort of burden that's associated with knowledge work and task switching, uh, you know, obviously that analogy probably rings for everybody with the uh, traffic uh, being sort of stagnant at 65% or, you know, yep. at, 
Um, and when you think about that in relation to your work, it kind of helps you understand. It's like, oh, okay, it's not anything I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm doing maybe a, a bit too much, uh, right? And so being able to uh, reorganize the way that I handle the work and um, mm -hmm. you know, allow for those rules and, and the structure of personal Kanban helped me to be more effective with getting to people sooner and getting them just to that next step they needed to go to versus you know, thinking of the whole journey all at once. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so that's, so kind of step one in limiting your whip is understanding the work that's coming in. But then uh, I know that you've worked quite a bit on what limiting your whip means for you, which is because you're in a, not only a, a high impact environment from people calling, you know, saying I would like to buy something, but also that you have a lot of things in flight at time and at times so different, different negotiations with different potential customers at different times. Yeah. So how do you, how do you conceptualize what your whip is and, and how you limit it? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. This was actually really helpful to that end. And at any given time, I average between 50 and 80 open opportunities at somewhere along the stage. Um, and I, I often like talk about this. You could tap me on the shoulder on Sunday night as I'm cleaning up the dinner dishes at home and say, hey, what's going on with Amazon? And I could tell you. Uh, <laughs> it freaks me out that I can do that because I, <laughs> it's too much, right? It's too much to remember the state of every open opportunity that's on your plate. And so one of the devices that helps me to leave it where it belongs, right? So that mm -hmm. I can be home with my family enjoying my time is um, uh, one example has been a Trello board that I created that uh, represents each step in the process and there's particular work involved with each step. And so having this card of information or material, uh, Kanban, mm -hmm. if you will, that carries all of the ele uh, relevant information for that particular opportunity, mm -hmm. and it advances, I advance that card through the process as we go. And, uh, and it has a nice sort of aging feature as a cue to me that this has gone longer than you want it to without mm -hmm. attention. Um, and so creating this board with all these different uh, stages and then creating this card with all the information and moving it through so that I can basically open up the Trello board and see I have three uh, pieces of whip, right, or three opportunities in mm -hmm. this particular stage. Um, and that's just enabled me to kind of leave things in that, you know, where it is until we get all of the things that we need to advance it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, has that calmed you? I don't want to say calmed you down like you were frenetic <laughs> before or crazy or anything, but, but I mean, has, has that kind of uh, impacted, you know, quality of life or work-life balance or just, you know, happiness at all? I mean, how's, sure, how's it how does it make you feel? <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's great because it has a place that it belongs and it has a beginning, middle and end. And mm -hmm. I can identify where am I, where is the thing, right? It's in stage two. Uh, mm -hmm. And is it in the beginning, middle or end? Have I done all of the work that I needed to do to complete it? Um, and I can, I can see that. I can take a look and I can say, okay, that is with the customer. It's being socialized in their organization. It's being approved by their leadership. So I can sit tight. You know, I can maybe send them an article if I see something that's relevant, but that's not an action item for me. And so it enabled me to visually see what work I was responsible for taking that next step on mm -hmm. and let rest the things that I wasn't responsible for. So in terms of energy, uh, I was able to direct my energy where it needed to be versus spreading it across everything I had open. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was really helpful to me, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I guess the last bit of that is, uh, so now that you can, you, you're seeing things and you're tracking things, watching them flow through through the system and theoretically a little calmer. Uh, does, uh, uh, how, does that, how does that relate to being able to deal with anomalies or problems or weird oh. stuff? when it arrives. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, another feature of that Trello board too is uh, I was able to capture the customer's picture from LinkedIn and put the customer's picture on that card. Um, and so then I was having person to person relationships with the work versus, uh, you know, data and information. And so opening up a card and seeing Susie, it's like, oh, Susie needs that from me. For some reason, that's easier to handle than, you know, company XYZ needs that from me. So that was really helpful. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and uh, in terms of solving problems and um, maybe uh, coaching a little bit, getting getting coaching, pulling for coaching, um, anomalies, exceptions, 
I have uh, started experimenting with pulling that work out of Trello. Uh, now, a number of people within the organization had uh, access to that board, so mm. they would see and get notified as things updated and changed and moved through the board. But I was having a little bit of trouble getting um, engagement, right? So mm. getting people excited about these opportunities or creating awareness around who was asking. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the volume actually was just overwhelming for people to keep track of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I pulled it out of the computer and I've put it onto a wall. And so my operating system at the moment is um, on is, is a visual, like a tangible, tangible, visible, um, you know, visual management on the wall. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, a ticket or a Kanban card for each opportunity. And we are tracking the, I guess you can call them KPIs, but that's such mm -hmm. an overused term, right? We're, we're tracking, I guess, the success factors of, of this work. And so, for example, as inquiries come in, we, you know, this first brick of work would be, um, brick, heavy piece of work, this first part of work would be the receiving routine, right? And so there are, you know, steps one, two, three, four, and five to properly receiving this work, right? Receiving mm -hmm. this inquiry from a customer. And um, what we, so I, I asked myself a few questions, and one of the questions is, um, am I responding in a timely manner? Mm -hmm. um, am I available when the customer wants me? And uh, there, there, you know, some other things too. And I had trouble thinking about like, how do I visualize that? How do I see if mm -hmm. I am responding in a timely manner? Because of course I think I am. Like I'm a professional, <laughs> I do this for a living and I'm on the spot, I'm on the job. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, but how can I actually test that and see, right? So I'm not just like giving myself a pat on the back. Uh, and so I started to graph the number of days, actually. Uh, and at some point, I'd like it to be the number of hours. But at this point, it's the number of days it takes for me to respond to somebody's inquiry. And I was really shocked to see that there were times where it would take four days to respond to an inquiry. And then the second thing I saw was that there was a great deal of variability. So some would get responded to in a minute and some would get responded to in five days. Mm -hmm. and I didn't actually understand why that was happening because it's my job, right? It's what I have to do and I'm doing my job. So how is this fluctuation happening and why, why can't I see it? So uh, at the end of each week, I have this card that shows how many inquiries came in that week and how long it took me to respond. And I capture that uh, in, in, a, in a way in a notebook, right? So that I can sort of reflect and see. And so uh, I, pulling that information out of the computer and putting it on the wall and graphing it in that manner allowed everybody who walks by that board and I strategically put it in a place where everybody will walk by it mm -hmm. uh, to see that variance and that flex and you know, that fluctuation and create it has created conversations around hey it took four days to get back to this customer why was that mm -hmm. um, and I actually felt quite vulnerable doing that especially in uh, you know uh, at I guess where I work, right? We're, we're supposed to be the best. And, um, and so I, I decided to just, you know, put it out there because I know that I can't improve without, uh, it, it takes all of us, right? It takes uh, coaching and it takes mm -hmm. teamwork. Uh, and so I put it out there despite my concerns and vulnerabilities. And I said, you know what? I don't know why that's happening. And so we started to look into it a little bit deeper and it facilitated these conversations about uh, the different ways that inquiries come to us, uh, the different, time of day that they come, uh, the different channels. And uh, what we learned was that when an inquiry comes into another person and then gets forwarded over to me, that creates at least a two day lag because that person has it for a day. Then the next day they respond and I have it for a day and I respond. And I feel like I'm responding in a day, which is you know within 24 hours. And in fact, the customers waited three. So it was a long explanation, but what it enabled was uh, coaching between me and my coach about what's the problem to solve. Mm -hmm. And then an experiment between me and others in the organization to try and uh, sort of level set. So this person will check the info account, it's called, uh, between 9 and 10. And then I will do my receiving uh, routine between 10 and 11. So that way everyone's sure to get a same day response. Um, awesome. So long, long explanation, but yeah, bringing it out, putting it on the board and enabling conversations about it uh, helped us to experiment and actually solve some problems. So at that point in the interview, uh, we started talking about the Deb's personal use of uh, personal Kanban and the other tools that we talked about in the classes. And uh, that's in a different video. There's a, a link to it probably below this one. But 
Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to just discuss uh, about what came out of this particular conversation that, that I found pretty exciting. Uh, number one was just the notion that Deb, after five to seven years of working with these ideas, still feels that she's kind of a beginner. Uh, and that's important because I think that if we ever think that we're not beginners, if we ever think that we're you know, especially experts at being able to get work done, that's going to be the moment that we stop taking in new information. That's the moment that, that we stop innovating. So, you know, feeling, you know, always feeling like there's something new to learn is, is exciting. Uh, so the second thing was was Deb's notion of options. You know, figuring out which options to pull. When when can I when can I select a task? When can I do something? When do I share it with other people? When is it of importance to them, and when is it not? Is the understanding that the work that we're doing, like there's none of us that just operate in our own silo or our own shell. There's always people out there that need information from us about what we're doing and how we do it. The important thing is to make sure that we've come up with a system that allows us to get that information to them uh, and allows them to get information back to us without inundating them or interrupting them or, or vice versa. So I, I really appreciated you know, that, that she took her, her board out of Trello, you know, put it back up on the wall and made it a, t a source of conversation, even though some of those conversations were uncomfortable. Which, which brings me to the third thing, which is just <laughs> generally being uncomfortable at all. Uh, so, you know, Deb mentioned that, you know, she was just putting things out there, even though it made her kind of, kind of vulnerable. And the thing is that, like, we all have this fear of being judged, uh, all of us as individuals. But when we're envisioning a project or we're envisioning a system or we're envisioning, you know, people that we manage, right, we have a uh, very low tolerance for other people's worries about, you know, putting things out there, about being judged, about being judged harshly or negatively, uh, or just about looking foolish. Like if I put this out there, do people, are people going to think that I'm less of a professional? And what Deb found, which is, you know, what most people find when they do actually finally put, put stuff out there is that, yeah, people can come back and they might say things that you don't agree with or you don't like, but it's a lot better than people just not knowing what you're doing. And it also means that uh, more often than not, people are going to come back and say, can I help you with that? Uh, am I not getting you what you need? You know, those collaborative kinds of conversations, which create almost instant improvement and a, a better working environment for everybody. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, and, and please comment below or comment, you know, wherever you're watching this because it ends up being syndicated. Uh, but just please do comment and, and we'll respond because, uh, you know, that conversation is, is indeed how we, all, how we all learn. So thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next interview.